Sutra. You might hear the secret Dharma doors of Buddhas as numerous as most of dust, but without first renouncing desire and outflows, you may amass learning, but you will still make mistakes. Commentary. Manju Sri Bodhisattva continues. You may hear the secret Dharma doors of Buddhas as numerous as most of dust. Ananda, you have listened to limitless Buddhas explain their secret dramas. Secret means that you say something for one person and a second person doesn't realize it. Or you speak for the second person and the first one doesn't realize it. Or you speak for the second person and the first first one doesn't know. Each is unaware of what is said to the other. Why does the Buddha have secret drama doors? It is because the capacities of living beings are different. Each person is fond of different things. What is more, each person has cultivated a particular path in past lives. Therefore, the Buddha contemplates the opportunities. He looks to see what Dharma door you cultivated before, and based on that, he teaches you how to cultivate now. Contemplating the opportunities, he bestows the teaching, speaking Dharma for the sake of each person. He does not teach you Dharma doors which are not appropriate for you. But without first renouncing desire and outflows, you might amass learning, but you will still make mistakes. Although the Buddha has many secret dharmas, you still have to get rid of your desire and outflows. Desire is really hard to overcome. As soon as you have desire, you have outflows. The most serious desire, the one people find hardest to cut off, is the desire for forms. If you can cut it off, you are an outstanding person, extraordinary. When you study the Buddha Dharma, you must cut off desire in order to able to be rid of outflows. At the fourth version of Ahadship, one has no outflows. The first stage, Ahad, is at the position of seeing the way. As a result of having extinguished 88 kinds of delusion of views, the second and third version are called the position of cultivating the way. The fourth stage, Ahad, is at the position of having been certified to the way. At the first, second, and third fruitions, one has not attained the state of having no outflows. Only at fourth stage is that achieved. Having no outflows is extremely important. Why hadn't Ananda reached that level? He had not gotten rid of desire. There were still some things he wanted. He was not yet pure, and so Dharma Prince Manjushri tells him, if you don't cultivate and get rid of greed and desireful forms, then you won't have a response with the Buddha Dharma. If you merely concentrate on erudition, then you will steal all. That's why you encountered the difficulty with Mantaji's daughter. If you renounce desire and outflows, you won't have any more difficulties. When we see that such an intelligent person as Ananda still had this fault, you sh we should notice that not only have we not severed desire, we are intent upon pursuing it. It has never occurred to us to get rid of it. Wouldn't you say that is an even greater mistake? At this point, everyone should return the light and examine within. Is it the case that we have desires? Have we gotten rid of them? If not, would we like to get rid of them? If not, then there's nothing else to say. But if you want to get rid of them, then quickly start cultivating the skill of returning the hearing to hear the self-nature. Stud study Quan Shin Bodhisattva's perfect penetration of the organ of the ear. Sutra, you concentrate on learning to uphold the Buddha's Dharma. Why don't you listen to your own hearing? Commentary, you concentrate on learning to uphold the Buddha's Dharma. You expand your energy on study of the Buddha Dharma. Manju Sri Bodhisattva says to Ananda, With that skill, why don't you listen to your own hearing? Why don't you return the hearing to hear the self-nature? Why don't you cultivate 
and develop that skill. Why do you look into yourself? Sutra, hearing does not spontaneously arise because of sound, it gets its name. But when hearing returns and is free of sound, what does one call that which is set free? Commentary, Ananda, don't continue to take learning so seriously while neglecting your samadhi power. Hearing does not spontaneously arise. It doesn't happen all by itself because of sound. It gets its name. Because there is sound, there is hearing. We call the perception of sound of a sound hearing. But when hearing returns and is free of sound, what does one call that which is set free? We say that there is hearing because there is sound. But is the hearing still there when there is no sound? It is because the nature of hearing is not subject to production or extinction. Therefore, turn the hearing around. From now on, don't follow out after the six sense objects with your sense with your six sense organs. Bring them back. Returning the hearing, listen to your nature till the nature reaches the supreme way. What is your self nature? When you hear it, you will recognize it. Now, before you have heard it, you won't understand even if I tell you. For instance, when I drink this cup of tea, I myself know whether it is hot or cool, but you still don't have any idea. If you want to know, you will have to drink some yourself. If you want to recognize your self nature, you first have to have to return the hearing. If you haven't done that, how can you expect to know your own nature? When you return the hearing, how do you listen? You ask. Use your ears, but don't listen to the sounds outside. Don't try to figure out what's happening out in the street, or who is saying that. Turn the hearing inward and listen inside yourself. In this way, your own nature will be revealed. That's how you do it. Now, do you understand? When the hearing is turned around, one is set free from external sounds. What does one call that which is set free? If you can divorce yourself from sound and hear and yet not hear, is this really hearing? Then it is and it isn't. It isn't yet. It is. Hear and yet do not hear. That's what's meant by getting free of sounds. One does hear, but it's not the same as the way one heard before. Even though it is said that ordinary hearing can reach far and near, it still has a limit. If you genuinely attain the state of returning the hearing to get the self nature, you can hear throughout the Dharma realm. But you can also choose not to listen to any of the sounds throughout the Dharma realm. You have control. It's like a telegram. If I want to send one, I can send one anywhere at any time. But if I don't want to send the telegram, I don't have to do it. If I want to hear some sound in the Dharma realm. I can tune in on it. You try it. What is that which is which is free of sound called? Then it doesn't have a name. That which is beyond even the name hearing is true hearing. So try. As soon as one sense organ returns to the source, the entire six are liberated. Commentary: When even the name is gone, one can say that that sense organ is untied. As soon as one sense organ returns to the source, the entire six are liberated. The source is the nature of the treasury of the first come one. When one sense organ reverts to the nature of the treasury of the first come one, all six come back together. The older brother returns, and the younger brothers follow along. But if you don't bring one sense organ back, none of them will return. They are connected because they were originally one, but then they divided into six. Sutra, sight, and hearing are like an illusory covering, a triborium, a vision of flowers in space. When hearing reverts, the cataract is gone. The dust gives way to pure and perfect insight. Commentary: Why don't we become Buddhas? We are tied up by the six sense organs. And six sense objects, so we must find a method to attain liberation. We are not the only ones bound by the organs and objects. 
at that time, Ananda also had this problem. When the same predicament, Ananda took this path to attain liberation, and we are now very lucky to learn about this method. We too can travel this path and get free. Sight and hearing are like an illusory covering. Seeing and hearing are not something real. They are like an illusion, like a film over the eyes, like clouds in the sky. The triple realm, a vision of flowers in space. The desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm make up the triple realm. We are within it, gazing into emptiness, until our staring makes us tired. Then it looks as if there are flowers dancing in space. At the beginning of his birth, Manjushri said, "The emptiness created within enlightenment is like a single bubble in all the sea. Emptiness arises out of the vastness of enlightenment and is as insignificant as one bubble in the great ocean. And the trip of realm is like a bubble in the sea of emptiness. When hearing reverts, the cataract is gone." When one returns the hearing and hears this, the nature, the film disappears. The dust gives away to pure and perfect insight. When the experiencing of the six sense objects dissolves, there are no external defiling objects to disturb you, your self nature. Then your enlightened nature is pure and perfect. Sutra. When purity is ultimate, the light is penetrating. A stillness shines and encloses within it all of emptiness. Looking at the world from this point of view, everything that happens is just like a dream. Mantadri's daughter too is part of the dream. Who was able then to physically detain you? Commentary. Ah, Manjushri Bodhisattva talks tough. He is not the least bit polite. He is downright rude to Ananda here. When purity is ultimate, the light is penetrating. One show inside is pure and perfect. Then, at the ultimate point, the light pervades. You become enlightened. A stillness shines and can enclose within it all of emptiness. When you attain this skill, emptiness is found within you. Your own nature is the great enlightened nature. When you return to that nature which was always yours, you include all of space. Looking at the world from this point of view, everything that happens is just like a dream. As you continue to use this skill, you contemplate the world and find that it is all nothing but a dream. Mantaji's daughter too is part of the dream, who was able then to physically detain you. She is a part of the illusion. Who was able to capture you? You lost face. You wanted to be there. You liked it. If you could reach the level just described, who could restrain you? Not very polite, wouldn't you say? Sutra. It is like a puppeteer who plays with shadows and works the dolls to seem as real as pupil. All the ones is the move about freely. They are really, really governed, governed by a set of strings. Cease operating the controls, and they return to stillness. The entire illusion is without of nature. Commentary: It is like a puppeteer who plays with shadows. This refers to the puppet shows of old. When the puppets danced and acted behind a screen of framed oil paper, behind the puppets made of donkey skin attached to strings are manipulated by the puppeteer, and the audience sees their shadows against the screen. Nowadays we have movies; the puppets look lifelike, but actually they are controlled by the puppet master. They used to fight noisy battles on stage with swords and guns. I remember watching them as a child. He was the dolls to seem as real as pupil, dressed as men and women. They covered on stage. All the ones is the move about freely. They are really governed by a set of strings. It seems like they can move their arms and legs and even their eyes and lips, but it's all mechanical. 
they are strung up to an apparatus. Nonetheless, people watch a transfixed cease operating the controls and they return to stillness. The entire illusion is without a nature. There was nothing to eat after all. In this session, Mandrus Ribodi Sattva explains how everything is like an illusion. The previous section made clear how we are in a dream. Sutra, the six sense organs, are also thus. At first, there was a one essential brightness which split into a six-fold combination. If but one part ceases and returns, all six functions will stop as well. In response to a thought, defining objects vanish, becoming pure and wonderful, perfect brightness. Commentary Why does he speak about dreams and illusions? It is because the six sense organs are like an imaginary play. The six sense organs are also thus. The six organs are like the play put on by the puppeteer. It's as if a mechanism is controlling them, but if one organ can become pure, the others will be freed as well. At first, there was one essential brightness. Originally, there was a single, the single brightness of the nature of the treasury of the first common. It split into a six-fold combination. It divided into eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. But if but one part ceases and returns, if the knot is untied, all six functions will stop as well. If one function stops, the others will also cease. They will no longer function. In response to a thought, defiling objects vanish. All the involvement between the six sense organs and six sense objects comes to an end, becoming pure and wonderful, perfect brightness. They become the everlasting pure nature and bright substance of the treasury of the first come one. Sutra, if there is a residual defilement, one must still study. When the brightness is ultimate, that is the Tathagata. Commentary, if there is a residual defilement, one must still study. When ignorance is cut off initially, there remains the a subtle ignorance called appearance of production ignorance. That is what is meant here by residual defilement. Bodhisattvas must still cut that off when the brightness is ultimate, that is the Tathagata, that is the basic substance of the first Kamwan. Sutra, Ananda, and everyone in the Great Assembly turn yourselves around and revert the hearing. Return the hearing and listen to the self-nature till the nature reaches the supreme way. That is what perfect penetration really means. Commentary Ananda and everyone in the Great Assembly turn yourselves around and revert the hearing. You should cultivate according to this method. Don't let yourselves run outside, come back. Look within and find yourself. Return the hearing and listen to the self-nature. Till the nature reaches the supreme way. Your nature can accomplish the unsurpassed path. That is what perfect penetration really means. Why does he select the organ of the ear? It is the easiest to cultivate successfully. I believe that some of you already know how to develop this skill, while others do not. What does it mean to return the hearing to hear the self-nature? It is a skill used in investigating Chen. When you investigate Chen, you don't want to expend all your energy on seeking outside. You want to turn the light around and shine it within. Then you ask yourself, who is mindful of the Buddha? Who? You want to put the who in your heart and then listen with your ears. Pursue who? Do this non-stop. Don't let your skill become dispersed. You investigate this topic in everything you do, walking, standing, sitting, reclining. Don't be apart from this. If you depart from this, you've made a mistake. What is this? It is the question, who is mindful of the Buddha? You don't have to ask out loud. Ask your heart and listen with your ears. Listen within, not outside. After you have listened within, 
your heart and your hearing nature will eventually merge into one. And then, in some unexpected way, at some unexpected moment, you will suddenly open enlightenment, but you definitely must bring your mind and nature together. Don't let them scatter in all directions. Don't let them get dissipated outside. Collect them within. Return the hearing and listen to your own nature. Eventually and naturally, your skill will develop. Investigating a trend topic and returning the hearing to listen to the self-nature are the same. And now, everyone knows that using the organ of the ear in cultivation is the easiest method. So put your energy there and cultivate this Dharma door. Sutra. It is the gateway entered by Buddhas as many as dust moods. It is the one path to Nirvana. The scumments of the past perfected this method. Bodhisattvas now merge with this total brightness. People of the future who study and practice will also rely on this Dharma. Through this method, I too have been certified. Guan Xun Bodhisattva was not alone in using it. Commentary Now Manchu Sri Bodhisattva certifies as authentic this Dharma he has selected. It is the gateway entered by Buddhas as many as the most. It is the one path to Nirvana, he says. Not only was Quan Xin Bodhisattva certified through his use of this Dharma door, this method of perfect penetration that I am explaining, I too, Manchu Sri, gave proof to this doctrine of perfect penetration of the organ of the ear. Not only myself, but in the past, countless Buddhas also found this the one path to Nirvana. It was by this way that they reached the fruition of Nirvana. Thus come ones of the past perfected this method. They became accomplished by means of the perfect penetration derived from returning the hearing to hear the self-nature. Bodhisattvas now merge with this total brightness. Bodhisattvas cultivating right now are on the same road. People of the future who study and practice will also rely on this Dharma. People of the future who as yet haven't even encountered the Buddha Dharma will come to select this method for cultivation. Through this method, I too have been certified. A long time ago, I gave proof to this Dharma door of perfect penetration. Quan Shri Bodhi said I was not alone in using it. Sutra As the Buddha, the world honored one requested, I chose sincerely a skilly means, one to save those in the final end who seek to escape the mundane world and perfect the heart of Nirvana. The best way is to contemplate the sounds of the world. Commentary As the Buddha, the world honored one requested, I chose sincerely a skilly means, Buddha, I speak the truth, I say what is really so. The method which is the one to save those in the final end who seek to escape the mundane world and perfect the heart of Nirvana, of the eighteen realms and the seven elements, which Dhammadol is the most perfectly penetrating, which one is most appropriate for living beings in the Dhamma ending age. Some will want to get out of the world and seek transcendence. How can they fulfill their vow to cultivate the way and reach Nirvana? The best way is to contemplate the sounds of the world. Quan Shri and Bodhisattva here in the Saha world got the best response from this method. This method is the most appropriate one. It totally is best with the causes and conditions of most people. Sutra, all the other kinds of experience require the awesome spirit of the Buddha. In some cases, they bring immediate transcendence, but they are not the customary means of practice, spoken for those of shallow and deep roots alike. Commentary All the other kinds of experience require the awesome spirit of the Buddha. In cultivating any of the other experience drama doors besides that of the ear, one needs the Buddha's aid in order to succeed. Without the Buddha's support, one cannot accomplish anything through them. 
In some cases, they bring immediate transcendence, but they are not the customary remains of practice, spoken for those of shallow and deep roots alike. Although some used these methods to get out of the wearisome mundane dust and false thinking, they are not dharma dogs which just anyone can use. In speaking dharma, one must look at the causes and conditions. I must observe the person. For someone with wisdom, one should speak more profound drama. For stupid people, one should explain simple dramas. The drama cannot always be expressed in the same way. Only the organ of the ear is a perfect method which anyone can study. I think this drama draw is the most perfectly penetrating. Sutra, I bow to the ones thus come, to the ones come thus, and the Tripitaka and to those inconceivable ones with no outflows, trusting they will aid those in the future, so that no one will doubt this Dharma door. It is an expedient easy to master, an appropriate teaching for Ananda, and for those immersed in the final age, they should cultivate this organ of hearing, a perfect penetration that surpasses all others. It is the way to the true might. Commentary. After Mandru Sri Bodhisattva finished speaking in this verse, he made obeisance to the Triple Jewel. I bow to the ones come thus and the Tripitaka. The ones come thus are the Buddhas. The Tripitaka is the Dharma. And to those inconceivable ones with no outflows, those refers to the Sangha. The Bodhisattvas and our hearts with no outflows have attained a state which is inconceivable and ineffable. Their spiritual penetrations and wonderful functions are difficult to comprehend. He bows to the sages and sense of the Sangha, trusting they will aid those in the future so that no one will doubt this Dhamma door. I hope you will help all living beings in the future so that they won't have any doubts about the Dhamma door of returning the hearing to hear the self nature. It is an expedient easy to master. An appropriate teaching for Ananda. This Dhamma door is both easy to cultivate and easy to be successful with. It is the best method for Ananda to use. There is none better. And for those immersed in the final age, they should cultivate this organ of hearing. Not only will this Dhamma door bring a response to Ananda, it is also right for beings who will fall into the Dhamma ending age. Just use the method of cultivating with the organ of the ear, a perfect penetration that surpasses all others. It is the ways of the true mind. This dumbed door of perfect penetration goes beyond the other 24 expedient methods. It is a lot easier and brings surpassing the results. The true and actual mind found through this dumbed door is as I have explained above. Sutra, thereupon, Ananda and all in the Great Assembly experienced a clarity of body and mind. Having attained such profound instruction, they contemplated the Buddha's body and Parinivana, like someone who, having traveled far on business, knows that he is on the road home, so he has not returned completely. Commentary Thereupon, Ananda and all in the Great Assembly experienced a clarity of body and mind. They had gained tremendous understanding. Having attained such profound instruction, they contemplated the Buddha's body and Paranivana. They had received magnificent teaching from both the Buddha and Manjushri Bodhisattva. They looked upon the doctrines of body and Nivana like someone who, having traveled far on business, knows that he is on the road home, though he has not returned completely. This person has had to go away on business and hasn't arrived back home yet, but he has gone far enough to recognize that he is on the way to his house. The meaning is that, although the members of the Great Assembly and Ananda had not actually been certified, as having attained the second, third, and fourth versions of a hardship, now at least they understood the theory, the doctrine. Sutra, throughout the entire assembly, the gods, dragons, and all the eightfold division, those of the two vehicles, 
who were not yet beyond learning, as well as all the bodhisattvas of initial reserve, as numerous as the sands in the ten Ganges rivers, found their fundamental mind and, far removed from dust and defilement, attained the purity of the Dharma eye. Commentary throughout the entire assembly, the gods, dragons, and all the eightfold division of ghosts and spirits. The eightfold division includes Gandavas, Asuras, Garudas, Kinaras, Mahuragas, humans and non humans, as well as the dragons. Those of the two vehicles who were not yet beyond learning refers to the sound hearers and those enlightened conditions. Together with all the Bodhisattvas of initial resolve, as numerous as the sands in ten Ganges rivers, they found their fundamental mind. It was not like before when they didn't even recognize their own mind. They were far removed from dust and defilement, and so they attained the purity of the Dharma eye. Sutra, the Bishuni named Nature, attained Ahashri after hearing this verse. Commentary The Bishuni named Nature was Mantanji's daughter. She attained Ahashri after hearing this verse spoken by Manjushri Bodhisattva. At this point, he, she surpassed Ananda by being certified to the second stage of Ahatri. Ananda was still the, the first stage sage. Sutra and limitless beings brought forth a much less unequaled self for Anuttara Samya Sambuddhi. Commentary At that time, there were also limitless by these uncountable beings in the Dharma assembly who brought forth a much less unequaled resolve for Anuttara Samya Sambuddhi. There was nothing that could compare with the extent of their resolve. It was totally genuine. Anuttara Samya Sambuddhi means the unsurpassed, proper, and equal right enlightenment. Anuttara is unsurpassed. Samya is proper and equal, and Sambuddhi is right enlightenment. Their intention was to become Buddhas.